being a, 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 a something you've got to have by law does cause people to have quite emotive um, sort of feeling about it. Um, and what happens, uh, what's happened over the last probably 15 years, is people have developed a way of uh, using insurance policies as a way of earning a living. My job as an engineer has been to investigate um, accidents that are alleged to have happened. Uh, we call them uh, stage accidents, contrived accidents, induced accidents. Uh, and this is where criminal gangs are getting themselves together and are basically earning a lot of money out of insurance companies um, and obviously people that are paying for this, the general public. My job is to uh, alleviate, try to alleviate what's going on. Um, we investigate by looking at both vehicles um, and we try and work out is there any way this didn't happen and we use our experience and sort of skills as uh, engineers to try that out. Um, we've seen a, a quite an up, uh, well not an upturn, but a sort of, they change their modus operandi with what they do. Because they basically now, as we just find ways of discovering what's happened, and it couldn't have happened the way it's been described, or it's obviously a scam, they change the way they do things. So it's an evolving uh, risk for us that we continue to look at. And, and when, so when you actually, you're trying to investigate an accident, in, that, so, so it's, it's very difficult because in one sense, obviously, um, as a service, you want to be able to help people quickly resolve those issues, but at the same time, you have to look at it as a potential crime. So that's, that must be very difficult to manage. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, what we have to look at is, obviously, if someone had had a chance accident, um, they bought an insurance policy, and they need to insure the accident and the get back on the road or compensate it. So obviously we, we have to balance that um, by looking, you know, if we investigate this for three months, is the end result going to be, yes, it did happen. So we have to make a decision early on. Um, obviously there's lots and lots of indicators that we've got, um, that we use, a lot of software we use. Um, I'm afraid a lot of these people, well, I'm not afraid, but uh, luckily a lot of these people are exactly switched on and they do make some serious mistakes by using the same mobile telephone, um, by using the same address, same postcodes. So we, we, we do get indication, we get what we call intel straight away from them. So the usual one is um, they take out an insurance policy with us over the internet, sometimes using a stolen credit card, um, sometimes a genuine credit card. They then, within a few hours, will go out and say they've had an accident, they've hit somebody. Oh, I'm really sorry, I've run in the side of somebody. They will then disappear. Uh, in the real bad cases, we never get to see either car. But what we are faced with is a solicitor that's presenting us with a case of three or four injured people. That's sort of the worst case scenario. If we are lucky enough, we get to see both cars. Um, from our experience, we can look at the damage and we can sort of say, well, this couldn't have happened the way that they described it, so there's a possibility that this is going on. And we will challenge the solicitor. Uh, we do a report, what's called a forensic report. Uh, that is quite detailed, up to 18, 19 pages. And uh, the idea of it is the solicitor will read it and think, hmm, yeah, there's, there's doubt here. And obviously, if they uh, have got doubt, when they start thinking, well, I'm not going to get paid for this, so they go away. So obviously, we do have ones where there's the person is completely bogus, whereas they just use a false name, false address, false credit card, take out insurance, within minutes have an accident, hit someone in the side, and they just ring us up and say, I'm sorry, I've hit this person, and they disappear forever. Um, so for us, it's, uh, it's an evolving risk that we have to really manage really well. Um, we've got a team of guys, um, about five guys full-time on what we call forensic, uh, from top of Manchester down to Bristol. And, you, uh, and in terms of the forensic, so um, is it always the case that when you go and you look at a case that there is a car there, or sometimes do they get rid of the car so you can't actually look at a car? Yeah, uh, a, a new one that we've discovered, um, we've had quite a few pits on, is where they insure a car, um, they then have four people in the car, so that's four passengers, and they bring us up and say, oh, I've hit a tree. And then we go out and try to say, okay, right, we're coming out to see the car. So we go out to see the car. Um, and the guy says to us, oh, it was a low value car. So there's no car, so there's no evidence. We then say to them, well, 
Can you tell us where the tree was? The exit location? Oh, I don't know. It was dark. I can't remember. Well, how did you get the car back from the accident scene? Well, my friend can't let it. Um, I can't remember where he took it. So we've got absolutely nothing to go on, but the next thing we get is four people saying, I was in the car that hit a tree. And they claim personal injury. And at that, we're looking at probably anything between 50 and 80,000 pounds. Wow. Real hard one to spot. But again, what we use is our intel, whereas we link these people together and they will use the same mobile phone, they will use the same address. And that way, then it's down to our, our claims department or our, our personal injury department to challenge that. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big problem for us, a big problem. I mean, they say in the press that there's 50 pounds per insurance pro uh, uh, policy for everybody paying in, in a year. I believe, personally, what I've seen is a lot more than that. But I don't think the real truth is being told. And, and I suppose the, the other interesting issue in terms of your, your work is that um, how does this, this um, sense of risk and, and management of risk play out in your life? Do you think that you're very, very risk aware? Or do, you, do you find yourself very cautious or, or not? Very risk aware, especially when driving, because I, I do meet people that have been involved in these induced accidents where they people just slam their brakes on for no reason. And I'll be honest with you, it screws their life up. It really does. There's the anger side of it that they've been caught. Sometimes there's the injury side of it, because they've been injured and they've got no one to blame on because it's their fault, allegedly. Um, then there's the financial side of it for them. Obviously they lose their no claims bonus and their premiums go up. So yeah, I'm, I'm very risk aware. I, uh, I've got a camera in my car and if in doubt, hang about. That's my motto for everyone. You know, if, if a car just makes silly in front of you, then just pull over the side of the road, slow down, even stop if you have to, let them go. And, um, you know, everyone, if you do get involved in an accident, the most important thing is take loads and loads of photos, record the people that are there, descriptions of the people, photographs, because they let you take pictures and photographs of them. And um, anything that's sort of out of the ordinary that you notice, it's, um, it's a big problem. Excellent. Mark, that's absolutely fantastic. We, we're going to go now. I think that everyone here has got a much better idea of what they need to do. Thank you very much for being with us and see you very soon. No, 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 no.